Well, hello, good afternoon, Dixie Bell Paint fans. How are you today? It is Melissa coming to you live from the Top Drawer RVA, joining you every Wednesday at 3 p.m. on the Dixie Bell Paint page to sit on the floor and play with some paint. So I'm glad you could come and join me today. Welcome, it's nice to see you all. If you are a new viewer, a new visitor, please let me know where you're watching from in the comments below. And we are going to sit on the floor and play with paint and make a meadow scene today. I'm gonna to be Bob Ross-ish today <laughs> and I hope that you enjoy it we'll see how it goes all right so welcome welcome um, I don't know if you were able to catch me last week or not but last week we were outside on my side patio painting a door with Dixie Bell paint for the Dixie Bell around the home um, feature that they're doing for the next couple weeks and today I thought we could paint on this really cute little buffet so this is what we're gonna work on today all right and we're gonna do a little bit of everything and it's not going to be able to get completed today but i hope that after you watch me today and we get to the end of this video you can come over and join me on my own facebook page which is the top drawer rva i linked it above my head come on over and follow me there because i have some big plans for this little cutie all right so let's get started let's jump in hi jamie how are you hello dixie bell all right so this little buffet it's kind of like a squeaky little metal wheel strange piece but guess what I love an ugly ducking, a duckling and I love to buy the things that need a little bit of work. So when I purchased this little thrifted table, it did actually have a top on here um, that was old and cracked in marble. Um, I removed the top and it's actually leaning against the side of my house because I'm undetermined if I'm gonna put it back on or not. I actually think what I'm gonna do is actually cut a new piece to the top and we're gonna gel stain that, but we're not at that part yet of the journey. Right now we're gonna work on the base. So this little cupboard actually has a really cute little lock on the inside. So if you look here, there's like this little lock that twists around and it's built into the hardware. So I decided today to not remove the hardware. We're gonna leave the hardware on the piece and we're gonna paint it with the hardware on because the look that I'm going for on this flat front piece is a meadow, which we're gonna to paint together today, a sky, a meadow, and then we're gonna move into, over on my own page, some hand-painted chickadees and some branches. I don't know if I'm gonna add some really cute little red berries and make it winter, or if we're gonna go fall and do like little cute pussy willows. It could go either way, I haven't decided yet, but you have to come over to my page and follow me at the Top Drawer RVA to catch all parts of this journey. All right, so let's jump in. So I have cleaned this little cabinet with my White Lightning. White Lightning is a cleaner that you disperse into water. You can use it in a spray bottle. You could use it in a bucket. However you like, it needed to be cleaned. This came from a smoker's home. I know because when I opened it, I could smell it. Not happy, kind of gross, I need to get rid of it. So by cleaning well with white lightning, inside out, top and bottom, I'm then ready to come in with my boss, okay? I then clear coated this entire piece with my boss. Well, what is boss? Boss is your, your magical thing that you need to prevent any bleed through, to prevent stains from coming through, and it tackles odor. Did you know that? So this stinky little piece that smelled like smoke every time I opened it up, got a full bath in Boss. Boss and Clear was used on the outside and completely on the inside, as well as the bottom, back, and top. I know that sounds extreme, but when something is a little stinky, using this is gonna help block that smell from coming through because nobody wants to come over, open up your cabinet and go, ew, that smells terrible. You know, they wanna have a nice, clean, prepped piece. So clean the entire piece with white lightning and then coat the entire piece in Boss. I chose Clear to give it a kind of a blocking effect that that smoke would not come through onto number one, my paint, and number two, my smell. I don't wanna smell that. So if you know, boss, you need to have it in your toolbox. It's a necessity. And you can get this from the Dixie Bell paint page, which I've linked above my head, or you can find your local real retailer. But this is something you should have. Every painter should have this in their toolbox. It's an important thing to have. All right, so let's move along. So cleaned with white lightning, prepped with clear boss, Today, we are gonna paint a sky and a meadow on this piece. It's going to be very blurry and very pretty as a background, okay? So what's gonna be the focus on this piece is when I come in and do the hand painting and we paint the chickadees on there. Um, but for now, we're gonna work on the background. So we're gonna start today with Mason Dixon Gray. If you know me, I do a lot of hand painting. I paint a lot of barn scenes, farm scenes, um, anything that's really pretty, and kind of a, a natural scene, I'm digging it. It's my jam. I like to do that. I mean, who doesn't love a transfer? 
Everybody loves transfers, but guess what? I love some hand painting. <laughs> so I'm gonna get super extra today and paint birds on here. But we're gonna start with the background. I have my flat medium brush dampened with water, okay? And we're starting with Mason Dixon Gray. Mason Dixon Gray has a really pretty lavender tone underneath it. And we're just gonna start right here. I'm gonna paint over the hardware. I know which is a no-no, but like I said before, it's got some weird little locking contraption on the back. And I'm afraid if I take it off, it's never gonna go back on the same way. So we're gonna paint over top of it and make it part of our scene. So we're gonna start with Mason Dixon Gray on the top. When I paint a scene that's like a, a barn scene or a farm scene or any kind of outdoor scene, I like kind of a moody, cranky sky. I don't want it to be pretty and blue all over the place. I want it to be more authentic and true. And, and some days when you look outside, that sky is just a little bit gray and a little moody. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna be a little cranky. And we're gonna paint a bit of a cranky sky. So using Mason Dixon Gray, I have found is the most perfect way to get that moody, moody sky. It just looks super good. It, um, it has that really authentic look to it when you combine it with the blue. Because after we do this part of the sky, we're gonna come in with some vintage duck egg and we're gonna do that as well. So yes, I'm painting over the hinges. Yes, I'm painting over the hardware. That's okay. This flat fronted piece is going to be art when I'm done with it. It's gonna be a piece of art. So in order for it to be my blank canvas, the entire thing is gonna be my canvas. And that includes this little hardware on the front. So I'm gonna come up here and paint these edges too. And we're gonna get started. How is everybody today? How are you? Everybody hanging in? It's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. I'm feeling good. I've had a productive time. I was busy yesterday. I don't know if you're one of my fans and you follow my Facebook page. I was actually over at a new store that's gonna be opening up here in Richmond, Virginia. And I was painting doors over there. I was getting super, super crafty <laughs> and painting doors that are gonna be going into their bathroom. And let me tell you, painting is a workout. When you're painting a giant door and you're going up and down and all over the place, it's definitely a workout. I could feel it in the legs today. So I don't feel guilty for not going to the gym because I paint big things. <laughs> that means I get my workout in. So I'm gonna come down like this with my Mason Dixon and we're gonna shut this. And I think I'm gonna work on the front entirely first and then I'll turn it around because it's kind of a long piece and I don't want to, uh, to turn the whole thing. Okay, so we've got this gorgeous Mason Dixon gray. And because I prepped with Boss and Clear, Mason Dixon Gray has some really good pigment to it. Um, it's nice and thick. It takes on a really pretty color and it covers well. So because this is gonna be a mishmash, right? A mismatch of colors, we're going to um, probably get away with a coat and a half of paint. All right, so the next color I'm gonna use today is Vintage Duck Egg in my handy dandy condiment container because my lid wouldn't close anymore. So there you go. We're gonna move into vintage duck egg, okay? I'm gonna put it out here on my little tray and I'm going to switch brushes. I'm gonna move into another flat medium that I'm going to dampen because taking it in a damp brush is going to make your paint go that little bit further and a little bit smoother and gets rid of those brush strokes. So just so you know, let me see if I'm missing any questions. Let's see. Hello, Michelle, how are you today? Hi, Shirley. Okay, so I'm not gonna blend my colors yet. I'm going to just lay them down. What is going on in my paint? I put it on a plate on the floor. I think there was junk on my plate. Oh, the life of an artist to be nice and messy. I'm not gonna blend them together yet, okay? This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna just kind of lay those colors down where they're gonna live, and then we're gonna blend them together. So this is Vintage Duck Egg going in with my beautiful, Mason Dixon Gray, and I'm not blending them yet. Okay, so the plan is tree branch coming up here, flat, flat panels here, this is my canvas, all right? This is where the birds are gonna be. So we're gonna really soften this up, and we're going to make it look like a real sky in a meadow, so that when I come in and actually do paint my birds, it looks like they're sitting outside in a cute little meadow. Have you guys painted a, a scene before on your furniture? Do you like to think that your furniture is art? Because I really do. I really, really do. I feel like the hashtag, it's not furniture, it's art, is my favorite one. I like to paint and hand paint and make things feel totally one of a kind. Besides the fact that this is like 
This is the thing that makes my heart happy, y'all. Painting like scenes and animals and things like that. Even if it's just a shadow. I don't know if you've seen my farm scenes before where I just kind of do um, shadows on the crows. I love it. I just love it. I like the way it makes me feel to paint kind of a little bit more of a realistic canvas than anything. I think everybody should sit on the floor and play with their paint. This is what's the most fun. Okay, so we've got this gorgeous Mason Dixon Gray vintage duck egg. Now, here's the question. I did bring down here some Savannah Mist, which is this kind of gorgeous gray, because we're gonna make this kind of green on the bottom. Do I wanna use a tiny bit of this little bit of a, a Savannah Mist, or do I wanna do like more of the base coming up? Because we're gonna start at the base with color greens, so we're gonna bring in some holy guacamole, and I have a little bit of mud puddle, um, and we're gonna make it look authentic. Let's add a tiny little touch. I'm gonna to use the same brush, okay? The same brush as I was using before, with my vintage duck egg, we're gonna add a little bit of Savannah Mist onto the piece, just to kind of take away some of that blue. All right, so I didn't change my brush. I'm just gonna do the same one. Just here, just here in the middle, I think. Okay. All right, so let's blend some sky. What do you say? You wanna see how I make a sky happen? I'm gonna go back to my original brush and I have paper towel on the floor, okay? I'm gonna take off the excess amount of paint that I have on my brush with my paper towel. I'm gonna to dampen my brush. And this is basically a blended look, an ombre look. I'm gonna bring the beautiful Mason Dixon Gray down a little bit so that I can start to kind of make my landscape happen. I don't need to add another coat. I'm not seeing any wood peeking through. And to be honest with you, I think I'm gonna add a lot of um, Dixie dirt to the edges and distress it a little bit. Whenever I do like a, a scene, I always distress my work. So this coverage to me is about perfect. I can't believe the coverage you get with Mason Dixon Gray. It covers so well. I mean, who would have thought one coat covers that? So I'm gonna take that Mason Dixon Gray brush and I'm gonna to start to kind of pull these two colors together. Remember, this is the sky. It doesn't have to be perfect. I get those comments all the time, people saying, oh my gosh, that looks so good, how did you do that? I could never paint that. Yes, you can. You just gotta try. You just gotta play with your paints a little bit. You know, make it work for you. If you don't experiment, how are you gonna know if you can do it or not? I'm just taking those two colors, again with my brush, blotting it off if you feel the need, re-redding re it, redampening your brush with your, your water, and just kind of pulling those two colors together. I'm even coming down a little bit where this really pretty Savannah Mist is. See how easy those colors go together to make an authentic sky? Okay, so now I'm gonna switch down to my other brush that I had my blues on. This had my vintage duck egg and my Savannah Mist. I'm gonna do the same thing to these two colors. Again, blotting my brush dampening it so that I can have some kind of happy medium to pull those colors together. This vintage duck egg is good for coverage. I see a little bit more down here. Let's pull the two colors together and see what kind of coverage we can get. See if we need to add another coat or not. By using, oh, there's a puppy dog hair. By using a boss primer to prevent bleed through, also helps with the amount of paint you're gonna use, okay? You're gonna use less amount of paint on a project that's being primed, embossed, whether it be clear or white. It just helps your paint stick that much better. You might not need that full two coats. So I like that, but I want more gray coming down here. So let's pull the gray. So this is just kind of like a really soft, happy little background for where my chickadees will be on the front. And I'm gonna continue the same pattern, the same look around the sides. But for right now, let's concentrate on the front so that I don't have to move it around too much. Perfection. Perfection. I'm loving that. How are we liking that? Is that really pretty? Cute little sky, right? Is it looking natural? Is it looking fresh? By the time we come in here and add some really, really pretty soft clouds, along with the, the base, it's almost gonna disappear. You're just building a background for your project. What do we think? Do you like it? Throw me some hearts. Let me know if you think this is something you could try. I feel like I've painted a, a sky background 
on so many pieces I can't even count anymore. It always turns out so, so pretty. I don't think I've ever had a sky not look so delicious. They always look super, super good. Um, whether you're a beginner or an expert painter, I feel like this is something that everybody can try and everybody can do because that's just three colors right there. And honestly, you didn't even have to add in that Savannah Mist. You could have got away with not even using that lighter color, but by using Mason Dixon Gray and Vintage Junk Egg, you always get a sky that looks spot on. It looks so good, right? Super good. All right, let's continue on with the base. All right. Okay. So on the bottom of my little scene here, we're going to do color greens. Color greens is a really underused color I find. It's by far one of my favorites from Dixie Bell. Colored greens is a gorgeous, really deep, earthy, mossy green. It is, I don't know, it's one of my faves. It's just so deep and so pretty. I really like the way it looks. So we're gonna use again another brush because you don't wanna start mixing your colors all around. I have a bunch of brushes on the floor. I might even have another one behind me if I need it. I'm gonna start with the feet on this piece. We're gonna take this colored greens, all right? And I might jump out of frame a little bit so that you can see. And we're gonna paint the entire legs of this piece. And FYI, this has metal feet that come up to about, let's see, just about there. If I get it on the metal, it's easy to wipe off. So I'm just gonna come down and add this gorgeous colored greens all the way up the legs on this piece. So the legs will be straight colored greens. It's just a nice neutral. It's a nice base for what I'm trying to achieve. And again, this will be all four legs colored greens. I've done this on a couple of pieces where the legs are colored greens and it just looks, it's just a nice match with the sky. You know, it's a nice, almost like it fades away into nothing. It's a really nice way to kind of make a, a landscape happen with a couple colors. And don't be afraid to mix your colors. If you don't have colored greens and you wanted like a, a brighter green, you could use evergreen or you could use kudzu. You know, this is entirely what you want to do for your painting. Nobody's the boss of you. You decide how you want to paint. I think that everybody should sit on the floor and play with your paint and make a little magic happen. You know, if you wanted to try this look, you don't have to complete it exactly the way that I did it. You could try your version of it. And it might even, you know, work out better for what you like. Everybody has their own taste and their own style, right? But if you do try it, I'd love it if you tag me. I'd love to see. I always like to see what people are painting. Okay, so I brought it up a little bit wider on the edges here. Now this is where it's going to get interesting. I've got a couple other colors on the floor. Holy guacamole, which is a really pretty green, kind of a lighter green. And I also brought the very underused mud puddle. <laughs> Nobody ever uses mud puddle. When's the last time somebody painted mud puddle? Mud puddle is like a, like a brownish kind of topish color. This is the color I'm going to use to transition into my sky. This is where I want to make my paint start to um, disappear because this sky is just my background, my backdrop to the birds that I'm gonna be coming in and painting up the front. So let's do this. I'm gonna keep the same brush, all right? And I'm gonna dip into my holy guacamole. Because I'm only blending in this little tiny area, I can kind of go back and forth with these greens. If you felt more comfortable using a separate brush for each color, you can totally do that. But I wanna see what happens when I start to pull these two colors together. I'm not gonna to use a lot. It was just a very little amount. Again, because I primed with that boss and clear, I'm not using a ton of paint. Pretty, look at that. So pretty, right? Just like the perfect amount of green. It's not too much, not too much. All right, again with the same brush, I think I'm just gonna add a tiny bit over here in the corners. Now you guys know that I pick up these pieces um, and pretty much paint them just for you here on the Dixie Bell paint page. There's not often that I'm doing one on here that's a piece that has to be done a specific way. I'm a lot more comfortable painting for you when I can kind of choose what I want to paint, <laughs> right? If it doesn't have to be custom, I don't have to, you know, nobody's being the boss of me. I can kind of do what I want to do. And I find for live painting, for me, that works better because it's, it's more relaxing. 
I can kind of figure it out as I go along and decide how I'm going to do this. Okay, so now you can see we've got our Mason Dixon Gray coming down into our vintage duck egg. Tiny little bit of, let's see, Savannah Mist. And we're going to put the lid on the Savannah Mist because it's super full. I'm afraid that it's going to fall over and I'm going to sit in it. <laughs> I did the legs in um, some beautiful color greens and I added a tiny, tiny touch of holy guacamole. So here's the deal with holy guacamole. It only comes in this size. You can't get it in the eight ounce. It's, it's a bigger size, but guess what? You don't use a lot of it. I find it's great for mixing with other colors um, or an accent pop color on like a, a drawer on a nightstand or something. So even though yes, it's bigger, you're going to have it forever because you're not using an entire piece of holy guacamole because that might be a little scary. Unless you love holy guacamole, then go for it. Um, I find I don't use a lot of it. I use it as my blending medium, especially when I'm doing grass and meadows. So let's take, let's take the same brush and dip it into the mud puddle a tiny bit, a tiny bit. Okay, we're gonna kind of blot it off and we're gonna see what the mud puddle, this little bit of brown is gonna do when we start to bring it into the blue. Because green into this light blue is almost like too much of a jump, if that makes sense. So doing it this way, I'm gonna find a way to kind of pull those colors together. That's loud, isn't it? Noisy. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna blot off and I'm gonna kind of meld these colors together. Mud puddle, holy guacamole, and a little bit of colored greens. I'm gonna redamp my brush with my spray bottle. And we're gonna play with some paint. If you felt like you wanted to add more of the colored greens, you can. It pulls together quite nicely. Again, the background needs to just kind of disappear. I don't want the background to be the focus. We, we really want to do a soft blend. All right, so now I'm going to go back to my Savannah Mist brush. All right, that's this one. I'm going to see how these two colors pull together. I can't decide if I'm going to have to pull that down more and make it like an edge right here where this line is, or if I'm going to bring it up and kind of tilt it over. So let's add a little bit more to my brush just to redampen that area. And let's see how we can pull those two colors together. So noisy. You know what? Not bad. Mud puddle. You know what's funny? I don't know if you got a chance to see um, when the brand ambassadors did the painting challenge where we all just picked our, our least favorite and our most favorite colors and we were challenged to work together. Um, mud puddle was one of the colors and I'd actually never used it before that challenge. I found that mud puddle is very much like that holy guacamole where it becomes a medium to blend colors together. I mean, it's not a color you would, you would think that you would use very much. It kind of looks like chocolate milk, but when you pull it with other colors, you're just able to kind of get that in between tone that you're looking for to make those colors work. I don't know. It's kind of magical actually. I'm digging it. Okay. So this is pretty. I'm happy with this. Let's work on the edges a little bit more. I'm going to go back to my mud puddle brush. I'm going to dampen it a tiny bit and we're going to bring it up just a little bit on the sides here. Let's see. And what I'm doing on one side, I'm kind of doing the other. I kind of want them to match a little bit because this background's the canvas for my little tiny birds that I'm going to be painting on there. Remember? Okay. Back to the blue brush and let's make those lines disappear. Again, blotting off your brush and paper towel really helps pull that color off so it doesn't get too contaminated. I'm going to go actually all the way back to my original Mason Dixon Gray brush just for this edge. And then again to the green brush. Ooh, it's looking so good. I'm liking this background. What do we think? Is that a good blend or what? Super good. Super good. Again, with the holy guacamole just down here, I want to darken up on the edges a tiny bit. 
Pretty. Okay, so imagine the tree branch comes up here. Do, 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 do. I have a couple little chickadees on this side. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other. Tree branch coming up in the corner, a couple little chickadees. It's gonna look so cute. Super cute. I should take a break and see what everybody's saying. I feel like I'm ignoring you, but I tend to get sucked into my painting and not a lot of <laughs> not a lot of chatting. Hello in England. Hello. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for loving it. You know, you got to paint what makes your heart happy. If you're not painting what you like to paint, then you're not going to want to paint very much, right? You have to paint what you want to do. I was really torn with what I wanted to do this piece today. I sat here in my room and I actually have a crystal hanging in the window and it reflects like a million butterflies and little light dancing rainbows all around my room. Super hippy dippy of me. But I sat here in the quiet with my coffee and I sat and looked at this piece. I had to look at it. I had to decide what it was that it wanted to be. I had no idea what it wanted to be. It was really, it could have went either way. At first I was thinking bumblebees. I wanted to do something with bumblebees. And then that kind of went away. And then the thought of like fall and chickadees just came to me and I was like, well, that's what it's gonna be. It's going to be hand painted, tiny little cute birdies on the front of a piece. You know, is it gonna be harder to sell because it's gonna have birds on it? <laughs> Maybe, but you know what? Like I said, I paint a lot of these projects just for you here on the Dixie Bell paint page so that I can teach you a technique and you can learn how to do something and painting this is what I wanted to do. Painting this is what's gonna make me happy. So that's how it's gonna go. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. You need to bond with those pieces. You need to decide what you're gonna paint on them. You know, make that decision. And if it's something wild and crazy, go for it. The more wild and crazy, the better. I feel like there's not enough wild and crazy. <laughs> there's a lot of wild and crazy in the world, just not enough in the painting world. So be bold with your finishes, make it art. Why not get a little fun with it? And, and have a good time because otherwise you're not going to want to paint all the time and I paint all the time all the time I paint every day so if I'm not painting what makes me happy then I'm not going to be a very happy mommy but this makes me happy I like to paint scenes so I'm going to add a little bit more mud puddle on the bottom I kind of want to dirty it up a little bit that was my Bob Ross teaching moment of the day. <laughs> How was it? Ridiculous, I know. But paint what makes your heart happy, honestly. It's the only way you're gonna make yourself happy. And sometimes hand painting is probably the only thing that's gonna make me super duper happy. Plus you have all these amazing colors to use from Dixie Belle. Why not take advantage of the whole entire palette and pick something from nature? You know, go for a walk and see what trees are speaking to you. Go for a walk and see what flowers are blooming. I feel like this is gonna be heavily influenced by fall colors and it's gonna be delicious. So the tree that the little birdies will be on um, could be a pussy willow tree with those really gorgeous little, you know, fluffy little pieces. Or I could do one of those really cool branches with the red berries. What do you guys think? I always let you choose something on my videos. Should I go fall inspired with fall leaves and pussy willow branches? Or should I go more Christmas with just a branch and some single red berries? Because you often see those little chickadees sitting on, um, on a branch, picking away at the berries. And I feel like that's kind of what's calling me, but I always let everybody else help me decide what I'm gonna do. So drop it in the comments below, your choice. Should we go super fall or should I go a little bit more winter with the red berries? So there you go, what do you think? Let me do a quick little recap, all right? Well, I've got you here and you can see what's going to happen with this piece. We started off by cleaning the piece inside and out with white lightning. Um, after we did the white lightning, I came in with my clear boss. I picked the clear boss because I wanted to stop that stinky smell. This piece smelled like smoke. It was pretty gross. Um, by cleaning it inside and out and then preparing it with boss, I'm talking like the inside was painted, the top of the inside was painted, the back was painted. I completely covered this in boss and clear. That's gonna stop any extra bleed through. It's gonna help my paint adhere to the piece and it's gonna take away that stink. It stops that smell. Um, after I was done with that, I came in with my Mason Dixon Gray, which you see at the top. After the Mason Dixon Gray, I came in with my duck egg. So the vintage duck egg is sitting in the middle and it kind of touched a little bit of that savanna mist on the bottom. And I'm kind of glad I did because it has a, a little bit of a gray undertone if you look at it. It's giving it kind of that 
fall vibe. The legs I'm going to paint completely in colored greens came up into a tiny bit of mud puddle and a touch of holy guacamole, which you can't even see anymore. You can't even see the holy guacamole. But guess what? It is perfect because it's the exact blending color that you need to pull those two together. So now I'm going to teach you how to make some clouds. What do you stay? You still hanging out with me? You guys want to make some clouds on this piece? So even though it's soft and pretty and a pretty background, I still want to do clouds. No sky is complete without clouds. And clouds are super duper easy. They're so easy. I get a lot of questions, oh goodness, um, about my clouds. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's no magical secret. It's super, super easy. So today for the clouds, we're gonna use cotton, all right? We're going to use cotton and you're gonna need some paper towels. So you're gonna wanna rip up some paper towels and you're gonna need a smaller brush, smaller than your Dixie Bell brushes. Speaking of Dixie Bell brushes, let me wet mine so that when I wash them, they're not gonna be terribly gross. Okay, so I've got an artist brush. This is just a tiny little brush right here. And what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the piece. Okay, so knowing my birds are gonna come up this way, I want the clouds to kind of blend up and in the middle and, and disappear. So to make clouds, this is how you do it. And don't judge me because they don't look like clouds at first, but I'm gonna show you. So you're gonna take your cotton or your fluff or even if you didn't want white clouds and you wanted blue clouds, you could use paint blue. You can use a tiny bit of paint in your brush. We're gonna start right in the middle. Go big or go home. Okay, so there's my cloud. Does that look like a cloud? No, no it does not. But this is how you're gonna get it to look like a cloud. You're gonna spray it with water. Come on sprayer, don't fail me now. I'm getting low, the sprayer's almost had the biscuit. I need to get a new one. All right, so I've taken my paper towel and I've dampened it, all right? You've dampened your paper towel. Not terribly saturated, just a little bit damp. You're gonna to start to curl your paper towel over top of your clouds. Softening those edges and making it disappear, okay? You're gonna move your paper towel around because it's gonna get a lot of paint on it and you're gonna need more than one. So you're just moving your paint or your paper towel around and you're fading out that base by softening those edges. This will be the perfect backdrop for when I come in and do the cute little birdies, which you have to come over and follow me on my page because we're not going to be able to get them all on there today. All right. So what do you think? Now that looks like a cloud, right? Super cute. Super cute. Let's do some more. Again, cotton, artist brush. You can also take even some, I'm gonna drop a tiny little bit of that Mason Dixon Gray at the bottom of this cloud. We'll make it an angry cloud to go with my angry sky. Again with paper towel, just smoothing it, fading out those edges. I feel super Bob ross -ish right now. Like I'm like the Bob Ross of Dixie Belle today. Just call me the Bob Ross. I'm gonna wear a wig next time. Chris Donna did one like that with a wig. It was hilarious. I always feel like the more detail of work I do, like the softer I speak. <laughs> I mean, you guys will all be asleep. <laughs> but at least the video will still be playing. You can sleep through it, watch it later. <laughs> It'll be saved to the top of the page. Sorry, cracking myself up. Anyways, there you go. What do you think? I'm gonna add a little bit more white over top of this gray. I don't want it to be too white. Mix it together. Do you think that you're gonna be able to paint some clouds? You think you try this? I've actually done a piece entirely with just clouds. Just clouds and blue, because it just looks so darn good. I love it. I could imagine it in baby's room. So cute, right? Right? Do you need to come in closer? You wanna come in closer and even check it out even better? I'll chop myself up and I'll bring you right down there. Perfection, let's see. I'm missing a whole bunch of comments. A bajillion comments, I see lots of hearts. Do you like this so far? It's kind of fun, right? Kind of fun. Let's continue and do some over here. So again, with the little artist brush and the cotton, let's do some over top of this hardware too. Let's bring some up here. You don't want them to be like, you can't have clouds all exactly the same. It would look weird. No, clouds are not always the same. You've got to really, really kind of move them around. Paper towel. Just rubbing it. I like to go in those tiny circles. I feel like it really buffs it out well. 
makes those edges just really pretty and soft. Going right over top of the hardware, I'm actually even going to bring it over here. If you pull some of your paint off, that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, this isn't really dry. If you wanted to make sure that didn't happen, you could totally wait for it to dry and come back in. But I told you I'm going to be distressing these edges and farmhousing this kind of up a little bit. So work smarter, not harder. Go with it. Let's add something. I feel like this cloud needs to be more white. I need to add more white here. So don't forget to drop in the comments below what you think I should do with my little birdie family that I'm gonna be adding onto this piece. Do I go fall vibes or do I go Christmas vibes? I could do either, could go either way. And you're gonna to have to come over to my page, the Top Drawer RVA, to see the final piece. I'll be on my own page live finishing up. I'll teach you how to, to draw a chickadee. It's not hard, you guys. Basic shapes, basic shapes. Anybody can do it. And if you weren't comfortable drawing a whole entire chickadee, you could draw a silhouette of a little bird. It would be the same thing and it would look just as good, I promise. There's about a million ways to draw a bird, and it's basically two circles in a triangle, okay? We can do this, we can make it happen. Ooh, loving that cloud, that one's my favorite so far. I feel like I need to add some more gray over here. Let's add some Mason Dixon gray. Make one little tiny angry cloud. I like the dark over top of the white clouds like this. I feel like it's just, I don't know, makes it look more true. All right, a couple more clouds and then I will let it get dry because I can't paint a chickadee on wet paint. I'll be drawing them on first with pencil and then um, painting him with Dixie Belle paints, all different colors. What do we think? Do we love it? Is it cute? Super cute? For some reason, all your comments have frozen to the bottom of the screen. Let's see where we're at. Oh my gosh, a million and five comments I missed. But don't worry, I'll come back in and watch them all after, I swear. <laughs> I will. And if you miss my, my comment where you can find my page, it is linked um, above my head, along with your link to the Dixie Bell Paint page to find your local retailer or order your own paint online. But this is a really easy way to kind of create a pretty background, a nice soft faded background for your scene. I mean, I could see this with a barn scene and a beat up old pickup truck. That would be super amazing. I could see this with like deer. You could paint some really cute little deer or a sheep. Oh my gosh, I should paint a really cute little sheep. It would be adorable. Could you imagine a couple little sheep peeking out like a meadow? I mean, honestly all the things. The options are endless when it comes to a basic background like this. Okay, I'm going to stop. You know why? Because I need to have a time to kind of sit and look at it and decide if I need to, yikes, add anything else, take away anything else. I have a feeling I'm going to, because the sides will be painted the same as the front, or here's a handy dandy tip of the day. One time when I painted a scene on the front, I just did the sides completely in collard greens so that it wouldn't be too much because it was a really big dresser. That's an easy way to save your time and your efforts by you know, taking the sides and painting them in that really basic one coat of color greens. It still matches, it still pulls it together and then you're just focusing on the front. Maybe I'll do that, it might happen, it might happen. Let's see, horse's head in the cloud. Ooh, I don't see that, I'm gonna have to come back and see it. I'm gonna have to look. Um, I'll probably do tiny little birds in the background flying, but for now, I will stop, wait, assess the situation, decide if I need more clouds, because the plan is, don't forget, two branches coming in with tiny little chickadee birds. I'm gonna come back in and count your votes, people. I want you to see, um, I want you to tell me, I wanna see who thinks I should do fall, which would be pussy willows and maybe some leaves, and or go winter and do red berries. It could go either way. It's so cute, right? So easy, so cute. You can totally do this. I swear, it's not that hard. All you need is napkins, paper towels, paper towels and some fluff. Again, I'll run over the colors one more time for you so that you can kind of write them down if you need to. But hey, you can always send me a message too. I'm always open to um, 
helping out or answering any questions. I started with Mason Dixon Gray. Mason Dixon Gray came down at a vintage duck egg. A little bit of, uh, I always forget this one, Savannah Mist, tiny bit of Savannah Mist. Then we have Collard Greens, Mud Puddle, Holy Guacamole. Three colors that I bet you, I bet you you haven't used because they're not very much used in furniture painting, but they really should be, especially this Collard Greens is the bomb. I absolutely love collard greens. One of my faves. Okay. So then what's going to happen when this dries, I'm going to come up here and Dixie dirt these corners. We're going to age them up. We're going to darken them up a little bit more. This is a moody sky. This is a moody piece. I painted over the hardware um, because it's fragile and I didn't want to take it off. I didn't want it to break and I knew I probably couldn't get it back on in some way. So you never know. And then we came in with some fluff and made some clouds. And that all it took was some paper towel. So get messy, sit on the floor, play with your paint. I want to see what you make and create. Tag me in your beautiful sky backgrounds. Tag me in the beautiful pictures that you're painting because I want to see what everybody's learning. I get super excited when somebody says that they've been inspired by something that I've painted because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. That's why I come out and hang out with you every Wednesday um, at 3 p.m. on the Dixie Bell paint page as Dixie Bell's newest brand ambassador. My name is Melissa. And you can tell that I like to talk. I do a lot of talking, not a lot of question answering. So I apologize. I will come back in and read your comments. Um, and you can find my page, the Top Drawer RVA, linked right above my head. Come over, say hello. I'm really close to my 10,000 follower mark. And when I hit that, I have a giveaway. Somebody's gonna get a present from me. So if you haven't followed me already, head over there, like me at the Top Drawer RVA. I will be back next week. Wednesday, 3 p.m. But if you want to see the conclusion of this gorgeous piece, please take a minute to come over and follow my page and I'll paint it live. You won't miss anything. You can see. All right. So don't forget to tag your stuff in the next couple weeks around the house with Dixie Bell. Paint your doors, paint your walls, paint some furniture. We want to see what you're doing. I hope you had a great day. Thank you very much. Go play with some paint. I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye friends.